Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the lushly forested border between the province of Dardania and the western province of Pannonia, where the Quadians are currently laying siege to the very impressive military fortress of Sirmium, and Emperor Arcadius is watching to see what happens because his own troops are badly racked by disease, and if history tells us anything, it's that an army that is badly racked by disease cannot conquer. I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is Total War Attila, the Eastern Roman Empire and History. And in this episode, we will finish off our topic of the Emperor Diocletian, and we'll move on to other emperors. But right now, we just started a new turn, though we spent all of our money, and I think it's time to actually end the turn. So, at the end of the last episode, I spoke about how Diocletian remade the role of emperor to be one that's kind of blessed by the gods, or chosen by the gods, and he created this whole elaborate apparatus to deify himself, not as a god necessarily, but as chosen by God, in order to prevent assassinations in the future, to create a more stable Roman state, because of the crisis of the 3rd century and all the different emperors and assassinations, it was just horrible, and the empire really suffered as a result of it. But what was remarkable about Diocletian is when he, well, many things were remarkable, but one remarkable thing that is relevant to us in this LP is that when he did divide the empire into two parts, east and west, and gave the other part to his co-emperor, the part he chose for himself as senior emperor was not, as you might expect, the west with Rome, but the east. He actually chose the city of Nicomedia, which isn't on here, but it's around here, for his capital. And it's the first acknowledgement that the Roman East was actually more culturally and economically powerful and wealthy than the West. That's important because, as we all know, when the division happens, the West falls, the East survives. So he might have been prescient in that moment by kind of moving the apparatus of power from the West to the East. Okay, so the people here are pretty unhappy, which they should be. I've been neglecting them because they're right here on the border. But I think I shouldn't anymore. We have two farms, which I think are kind of worthless because I don't think the fertility here is very good. Well, no, it's actually... Okay, it's at least as good as Bithynia. Base fertility of 4, and I mean Bithynia. So it's the same as Thracia. I think the fertility changes depending on the season. But Egypt has the best at 5, and the islands, and Osroween. So actually, building farms here are not a bad idea. It's just that this place is going to be constantly under threat. This whole area is kind of a scary area, so I'd rather spend my money here. But the problem is the only decent farmland we have is here. And as we discovered in the last episode, the islands can't even feed themselves. No. Okay, so, but I do need to do something about the diminishing. Well, the public order is actually growing, but I need to do something. So, hmm. Or should I just kind of not do anything and instead spend the money elsewhere to make more money and then come back in a later turn and do something? Ready for orders. We're still losing men. I wonder if I go over to Thracia, will we... Still lose men. How can I serve the people of Rome? Yes. Okay, so this is just terrible, this consumption. Do you have it? Wait. He lost all of his traits. Didn't he have... He had cruel and likes barbarians. Remember all that? It's all gone. What happened? I mean, it's fine. He's... Better off for it, probably, but that's just very strange. No, it's useless. Huh. Well, okay, we'll move you back then, I guess. You know, in the old medieval, medieval 2, there was a way that you can, like, for example, I could just combine these two units into one full strength unit. Oh, you can do that here. Wonderful. Let's just do that. 
Well, that didn't do very well at all. Okay. Well, it's kind of a crappy command. Doesn't work very well. But at least now we have some full strength units. Okay. And the archers, I don't mind them being spread out, actually. But we have the consumption, and I don't know how to get rid of it. So that is going to plague us as time moves on. But we're going to do what we can. They don't have consumption, and they are humongous. And these rebels are causing trouble. And then we have the Dragon Slayers, the Bastarnians, who, strangely enough, probably aren't around in this period. The only notation that we have that they were is this work by this guy named Jordanus, who we can't really take anything he says seriously because he was alive in this time or slightly after. And he made things a little bit more romantic than they should have be. So when he was describing how Attila and his Hunnic army was moving to the west to fight the Western Roman Empire, he included the Bastarnians under the tribes that were fighting for him. But people assume he just did that as poetic license because you never really heard about the Bastarnians for many, many years. They lived around here-ish. So, I mean, we don't know for a fact that they were around or they weren't, but it's just interesting that they chose to include them. Okay, that's been resolved. Good. Lazica changed to Zoroastrian. Now, this is our protectorate, and they're changing away from our religion, so this is not a good thing. It'll hurt our cultural connection to them. Of course, they're surrounded by hostile powers anyway. Who are you? You are Kartli, and you are Abazgia. Armenia is still doing their thing. They actually do control their entire province. I would like that lumber. Hmm. Alright. So we can improve this. We can turn it into a tabernacle, which will give us wealth from commerce and wealth from all buildings and allow us to recruit spies. Or we can build an auditorium, which will improve public order, but it will improve the influence of Roman paganism. Or a scriptorum, which will improve research and give us 450 wealth from culture. That's a good one. We can't improve our vineyard. I mean, we can, but we can't afford it. Almost. Sanitation is good, though I don't know why. I don't have any sanitation buildings. This is a fertile province. I mean, building some wheat would ensure that we have... Or I can even build sheep or cattle. 30 plus 25, 40 plus 50. So cattle's kind of between wheat and sheep. It doesn't give you as much food as wheat, but more money. It doesn't give you as much money as sheep, but more food. Hmm. Okay, I mean, it's relatively cheap, and it'll give us some food and money. Let's get some cattle. Why not? In the meantime, if we improve this to skirmishing range, we can build archers. I don't know how useful that'll be against the... Well, archers are actually pretty good against the Persians, because they're heavily cavalry, and flame arrows are one really good way of taking out cavalry. But you also need spearmen as well. What can I just recruit normally? So I can still recruit Legios and Comitatenses, which is my baseline military. The only thing I would gain if I built a better infantry ground would be the Protectoris Domestici or Domestici, which are good, but I'd much would rather have... Let's do it. Let's just go with Skirmishers. So we can start recruiting archers from there. And we do have the cavalry compound here. We do. So we can now recruit Scout Equites. And we don't have the technology yet to do better than that. But this is what we eventually want. Because we get the Equites Promoti, the Equites Dalmate, and the Conteri, which are shock cavalry. Okay. So we're kind of low on cash right now. Ready for I could recruit some more units, or I could save the money, and we'll get a 5% interest on it. But no, you know what? The Emperor needs to be refreshed with troops, now that I think about it. And these guys are back. Oh, they're the Huns. I think we're cool. We're non-aggression pact. In fact, that's actually a really good idea. So now we're improving with Armenia, which is fine. But where are the where are you, Huns? The Garamontians hate us, which is sad because we could trade. The Gossanids. 
We're in a military alliance with them. They love us. All right, the Huns. We're improving, but they're still kind of moderate toward us. Why? Because we're a great power. Because we're friends with the West. Big cultural aversion. You know what? I think it might be time. We cannot trade with them. But I think it might be time to consider... I listen because your people are known to have honor. Okay. Military alliance would be very useful. Or even a defensive alliance. Ah, low success of that. You know what? Let's just keep him happy. Give him a small gift. That's what they did historically. They paid off the Huns. Should work for us. These guys hate us. They're actually at war with us. They're a horde. Does anybody like us that we could trade with? The Sassanids. And they don't like us enough, unfortunately. We are at war with the Vandals. Okay. Sassanids really like us. My master extends the most magnificent welcome to you and I mean, your honorable people. Why would they not want not this? They get access to all this stuff that they don't already have. Yeah, whatever. Alright. Leaving diplomacy for a minute now. The people of Rome. I will journey to the ends of the world for Rome. Okay. Alright, so public order is deteriorating here, even with the presence of the army. Why? Sanitation and disease. Okay. Oh, shoot. Well, I wanted to build waterworks, but we can't, so we'll have to wait till next turn to do that. We'll just leave it as a construction site for now. This guy's well set up. He's doing just fine. The Emperor could theoretically raise units of his own. They just wouldn't be as good an experience as what this gentleman can do. Okay, we'll just, in two turns, we'll have him support the Emperor. Right now, we, we'll move the Emperor back. He's just... I'm worried about him. There's just too many barbarians here, despite how awesome he is. Let's go take a look at these guys. Oh, they're the Huns, right. We're not at war with the Huns. Okay. Okay, it looks like the disease got better here. Too bad it's not getting better with my army. Is the army too big? Like, I just don't get it. Alright, so... Cappadocia is now stable with food. Palestine is stable. Everyone else is doing great with food. Alright, good. Bithynia. So Cappadocia, alright, taxes. They're still unhappy, even with the lower taxes. Or, sorry, the not lower taxes, but removed taxes. Um, I don't really know what to do about that, so we're just gonna let things kind of go. There's not much I could do, really. It's religion and religious differences. Ah, I see. Paganism's on the upswing, Greek Christian is on the downswing. So what we'll do is we'll build a church. Maybe next turn, maybe they turn after that. Okay. Eutropius, you are my eunuch. Oh, and you have low construction costs. That's excellent. We'll give you better public order and less corruption. Okay, you are the governor of... Oh, you're the loyal guy, right? Growth plus 10. That's wonderful. We'll improve research rate there. And either should we remove corruption or should we improve public order? Corruption. Okay. Okay, so finally, putting an end to our discussion about Diocletian, the other really notable thing about what, and I saw that army, by the way, or navy, heading toward Constantinople, don't worry. <laughs> the really notable thing about Diocletian was, after serving as emperor for a number of years, he did what no other emperor before him had ever done, which is he abdicated his role peacefully and let his Caesar, the guy under him, take over. And he also convinced the Western Augustus to do the same thing. So he retired to his huge palace compound, which still 
stands today in the city of Split. In that time, it was called Salona. And he basically retired to grow cabbages. And uh, while there were attempts later on to get him to come back as emperor because things kind of deteriorated after he abdicated, he did not do so. So that's one thing that makes him very interesting. He just he said, you know what, I'm just going to peacefully retire and grow cabbages because that is more impactful and entertaining than being the emperor. And we lost a guy. Oh, our recruiter. Or maybe the governor. One of the two. And are we better? Is the Emperor's army better? Oh, Udalali. So what's interesting is if I were Diocletian, I'd be kind of scared. I'd be like, if you abdicate power, you're basically putting yourself in the crosshairs. Like if his guy underneath him wanted to, he didn't. But if his guy underneath him wanted to, he could have had him assassinated, brought up on charges. I mean, when you're the Emperor, you make a lot of enemies. And to just give up your power, oof, I don't know. That takes some gigantic balls. Okay, this guy. Are you the governor? You must be. Oh, no, there's no... Who are you? Who who gained this? Location Ephesus. Rank 3. Oh, I'm not in Ephesus. There we go. This guy. Okay. We can recruit better cavalry. That's useful. Construction costs for sanitation. Sure. Why not? Or we can improve public order. Or we can improve his zeal. Recruitment capacity. Let's improve his cavalry and zeal. So now he has 444. Four, four. Excellent. Okay. So my plan was to build a church, I believe, in Cappadocia. But we cannot because we don't have enough people. So what can I get rid of? We definitely want the tanner. The industry we just built. We want, the, we want all this. I guess we can get rid of the industry and put it somewhere else. But I really want the church here. We can get rid of the Tabernay, I suppose. No. It's not going to help us with religion. Well, it might, actually. If we turn it into a scriptorum, it will improve... Well, it won't, actually. I thought it would improve Christian religion, but it won't. Hmm. Well, we got to do what we got to do. So, oops. That's not what I wanted to do, though. I wanted to change it into something. Well, I guess we'll dismantle it. It takes a turn to dismantle it. And that stinks. We wasted some money on that, but I wasn't aware that we needed a church. So this will build better farms, and that is exactly what we want, because it'll build us better sheep pens. And this will enable more wealth from cultural buildings and build a governor's estate, which actually we're nowhere near building in anywhere. So better farms, definitely. All right. Now, public order will be improved by... Upgrading these, however, we can build this from a city to a municipium, which will also improve our garrison. Why not? It's expensive, but it'll keep things under control here until we can build a church. And our income is looking fantastic. I've been making some wise choices in terms of what we're building, and I'm going to save some money to improve all of our sheep pens in a minute, too. Oh, and we also cleared some land down here to build a waterworks. Or we didn't. I thought we did. Oh yeah, we did. Construction site. Okay. Waterworks. And we're out of money. Okay, we're still losing men. This is really beginning to bother me a lot. And poor Sirmium. They're just sieging it out. What do we have here? Is 
This is an expensive force just to be sitting around. I wish it would tell you how many men total it had. Integrity's amazing. So, unit experience plus one for light unit recruits. I think that's only if the general recruits units himself, though, not if they move over. So that's not that useful. Integrity in foreign territory would be good. I don't know, folks. What should I do? Should I move to assist? The rebels are more powerful now than they were before. I should have crushed them when I had the chance. The Ostrogoths have already taken over these two places. There are more rebels here. And then there are more Quadians here. The West is just folding like a lawn chair. And there's nothing I can do to help them. I guess I can take out these rebels down here and save Domavia. And then I could possibly take out these guys. Commander. Hmm. At once. We're still under the pestilence. This is not the smartest move. But I'm counting on the fact that I'm pretty formidable that these two won't decide to attack me. But if they do, I'm in some trouble. But Arcadius is a loyal Roman, and he doesn't want to see the cities of Salona and Demavia fall to rebels and heretics. Make haste, men. Call this a garrison. All right. I want to recruit some more troops with this guy, too. How much does your force cost? 15. And their integrity is actually pretty low. They have no tradition. They've just been sitting around on their butts. They haven't really done much of anything. And their morale is down, and their integrity. Why? Is it your fault, sir? No, you're actually pretty good, in all respects. So it must be because of their integrity. Due to pestilence and attrition. So hopefully as soon as they get better. And their Sybil is like a cat? That's alright, I'll keep that. We'll just have this guy walk around, scout the border. How's Nisibis? Sad that everybody's sick. I wish there was a way to fix this. And finally, this army. Probably. Who are you? The Allens, who wanted peace with us. But I think it might be a wise move to reinforce Constantinople. In fact, you, sir. I want you to... Can you move down here? No, you can't. Oh, you're recruiting troops, so you can't really do much of anything. Let's unrecruit. I don't know if we lost that money. I hope we didn't. And let's move down here. Why? So that you can recruit some cavalry. You back up the city just to see what these guys are up to. Okay. Syria and Thracia are now impoverished in terms of food. Constantinople has some problems with sanitation. Maybe I'll fix that. Nope. We don't have enough population. Although I could I can improve this. It's the bathhouse. That'll be a quick sanitation push. And Tremontium is relatively safe compared to Marcinopolis, so that's that's something I could do. And then it'll help the city, so that way I don't have to waste one of its important slots. Alright. Well, ladies and gentlemen, next episode we will discuss Constantine the First, also known as Constantine the Great, and what he did as Emperor. We will maybe fight the Alans, maybe fight the Western Roman rebels. Who knows? There'll probably be more fighting, though. These past few episodes have been a little short on the fighting, I understand, but that's good. It's allowed us to really develop our economy. We have a great income. We've really been able to improve our cities and improve the happiness of our people, which is really important, especially once the enemy troops start invading. So once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.